Yo, 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 what it do, what it do Welcome back to Stay True Sunday Podcast You got your girl Kelly Jean in the house Cassette Coast here, man, what's happening? <laughs> oh yeah, Kelly Jean's back from being sick And now I'm sick He swears he's sick <laughs> I was just telling Coast earlier Every time she's sick, I take care of her But then when I get sick, don't nobody in the house believe no, me No, that's a lie, I always take care of him But Every time I get sick, this last time that I got, wait, hold on, I, I, I can't yeah, no. myself. No, go oh, ahead, go ahead. This last time I got sick, he knew it was serious, so he finally took care of me, and he did good. Thank you, babe. Yeah, but, but now that I'm sick, they like you exaggerate because he's not really that sick. Like it's that just, sick? it's See just, what I mean? He just has a couple symptoms, but he, he's not like sick, sick. You know what I'm saying? Plus, he's already taking medication, so he'll be all right. And I have been taking care of you, babe. I've been giving you tea, making you soup. Yeah. He just, he acts like a big old baby when he's sick. Honestly, he's like a big baby. Man, whenever I cough, he's like, <laughs> I'll be coughing. And okay. I'll be coughing, and they'll be like, <laughs> they just think I'm exaggerating. So, what are your symptoms? My tonsils hurt. Every time I swallow, I can feel it. I feel like my tonsils is just swollen, like the size of golf balls. But I still got up this morning and went and ran around the lake. You know what I'm saying? I still got my morning workout in, even though it was cold this morning. I still got up and went and did my thing, man. Still got that motivation. Yeah, man. I got to stay on my program, man. You know what I'm talking about? It's already February, what? February 2nd. Second. So that's, what, 32 days strong. Going, mm. going strong. Yeah. So last week, you guys, I wasn't involved in the podcast simply because I was just down and out. I was super sick and... I had strep and the flu, and I think Lucky drank out of one of my waters, and that's probably why he's... Yeah, that's exactly what happened. He's um, feeling the symptoms, but he has been taking my uh, antibiotics, so he should be getting better. I just soon. hope it ain't the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's talk about the coronavirus. What do you know about the coronavirus, <laughs> Coach? Well, I just recently started looking into the coronavirus because I hear so much about it, but I never knew what it was. Um, and it's a respiratory thing, right? It's like the flu. Yeah, it's a lot like that. It's a lot like uh, they compare it to SARS, if y'all remember yeah. that, from like 08 or something like that. Uh, but now it's, it's a, a respiratory virus, um, and it it's, uh, how did they say it? it it's It puts you on your ass. Well, it does that, but it's they, they consider it a non-living virus, right? Like, it doesn't have a life of its own, but it borderline does in the sense that it, it reproduces itself. Yeah. Um, That's why they can't get rid of it? Yeah. Uh, but I was also seeing they were, they were talking about from the time, I think the date was December 28th uh, is when the first case popped up mm-hmm. of the coronavirus. From that point up until I think January twenty third is uh, the window that they were uh, uh, observing. Within that time frame, there was five deaths from the coronavirus. Uh, but they were saying that also in that time frame, uh, just people with regular heart disease, there was one million people died mm-hmm. in that short amount of two or three weeks, uh, and they were saying. Uh, what else were they comparing to the coronavirus? They were saying something else. So but something people like with a, heart disease been having a heart disease. You know what I'm saying? Well, they're they're saying that it's not as big of as of an epidemic as, as a the heart new, disease. As, well, as the news is portraying it to be. Oh, okay. Like they're trying to they're trying to incite fear into people. Oh yeah, with this yeah. whole nah, coronavirus. I believe that. I believe that. They yeah. stay trying to keep us scared of some shit. Yeah, they're saying in comparison to what people are dying of, like on a larger scale. It's really nothing. Like it's, if you contract the coronavirus, like you're one in a million, basically. Yeah. But it is growing. Well, shit. I felt like I was dying this week that I was super sick. <laughs> Mm-mm. No, they said 300 people died in China, but shit, in China, there's like how many people? Three, thirty million people. It's hella people oh, in yeah. China. That's one of the most populated places ever. Yeah. Yeah. And you, Kelly, you was sick for a while though. Yeah, I think I went a little over a week. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nah, because you were sick on your birthday, right? Yeah, I, w- I got sick two days before my birthday. And then 
on my birthday it really hit me hard like it mm. was like it put me down and i was really trying to like push through because it was my birthday yeah i was trying to make the best out of it but after like the whole day went by i was like man i did the most today like i should have just chilled at home and then after that it was like it was just a domino effect of every day and it started small with me just coughing sneezing feeling congested and then i was like throwing up and it was just bad like i felt chills i, I don't even know if i had a fever because we don't have a thermometer but yeah, yeah. I was super super sick. So you got rid of it, and now lucky you come with it. Yeah, but I'm not as sick as that. I ain't got the chills. I'm telling you, it's just my tonsils. Like in in the morning and at night when I'm going to sleep, or in the morning when I wake up, I just feel like you know what I'm saying. It's just it hurts when I swallow. Yeah. So me, I even had a ear infection, and until this day, I still have problems with my ear. Like till today, I had my ear pop. So like my hearing kind of like goes away sometimes. Mm. So I'm still kind of like on the border of getting better but i do feel a lot better i'm not as sick yeah shit my grandma used to say whenever you get sick you just sweat it out <laughs> whether you gotta go run around or do whatever you need to do sweat it out yeah or like uh how chingo would do with his ginger root yeah. and all of that oh stuff. man i went to jamba juice yesterday and they gave me a shot like this big of some gin ginger cayenne, cayenne pepper, pepper and, and lemon, lemon. Just- it was sour and spicy and it just it didn't taste too bad that's I a mean, detox too drink good. Yeah. did you know that yeah i drank that shit i tried to do that you know one time i tried to do that for like seven days i mm. tried no eating just detoxing oh, on no. a big gallon of water a day i would try it when it was like water lemon juice cayenne and i think honey and mm-hmm. ginger yeah, you had to boil some ginger in it. I've done that before for one day, but not a whole week. No, well, my goal was a week, and I only went like two days and a half. Yeah, I and I was like, I can't do this shit. No more, I gotta I'm eat. I'm in a bad mood. I'm hungry. <laughs> I, mean, I gotta eat. And right now, after this podcast, I'm gonna eat. I gotta go get some hot wings, man. What's the detox supposed to do for you, though? It cleans Clean your, your body, everything, 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 everything. All everything. the toxins you got in your system. So at the moment when I was trying to do it, I was trying to like stop drinking and then turn into like eating healthy and working out so that's what i did to begin like mm. i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna detox my body and then when i come back to eating i'm gonna start eating healthy and clean and i'm gonna start working out i'm gonna stop drinking and man that didn't last like i said two days and a half i was eating a big old cheeseburger <laughs> after that i was like uh-uh i can't do it i gotta eat i'm hungry yeah i'm trying to eat healthy right now too i ain't gonna lie oh yeah what what, what got that going in you I just want to be more healthy, have a have a more clear mind, and when you take care of your body and you have your mind clear, you can make better business decisions. Amen. And it, it helps your finances and your money. You know what I'm saying? When you take care of your body and your your health, you know what I'm saying? And mm. I've been figuring that out. I've been reading some books, and then I got a I got a coach. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's been instilling that in me. You know what I'm saying? And telling me that i gotta i can work out and, and and run and do my thing but if i'm still eating unhealthy it just defeats the purpose so what kind of coach like a like a like a training coach like a workout you know what i'm saying like, oh okay. like, not only that though he's like been more of a like a business like a, coach it's like a life coach, coach you know what i'm yeah. saying you heard of a life coach mm-hmm. yeah i got a life coach you know what i'm saying so they he but he he comes from the fitness um area you know what i'm saying that's yeah. what he was he was a, a fitness coach like his expertise yeah so he came from how you get lined up with somebody like that he watched our vlogs and he hit he hit me up he was one of our our luchi gang supporters oh, man. He, yeah you know what i'm saying <laughs> so he reached out and uh yeah we've been we've been working with him um, for about six months huh yeah that's so dope, so when y- y'all see the the change in me you know what i'm saying that that's what it is you know what I'm saying i got a coach and i advise y'all to uh, out there if y'all ever Wanted to make a change in life, get a coach. Man, you know how many times I done tried to tell him, babe, let's work out, let's start eating healthy. And he's like, I ain't going to be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, but no, lot, but, baby. yeah, but but see, I didn't, I didn't correlate the two, like that, how they have a, a intersection between working out and eating healthy and connecting that to my business and my money. Right. I didn't know that they connect, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Until, um, not only did the coach tell me but the uh books i was reading and stuff and then it all made sense like oh okay so yeah you 
in order to keep your finances right and keep a, a good mindset you know what i'm saying you got to be healthy and eat right and work out and exercise and you got to do all that you got to change your your inner being so you can change yeah. your outer world you know what yeah I'm saying? i think it falls more into it's not like oh you can't be successful in your business if you don't eat right and work out i mm-hmm. just feel like it falls into the whole category of discipline like yeah being disciplined in every area of your life exactly. can get you a long way you know yeah. and fast so i think that's where everything combined together just discipline it that's like the root of it Mm -hmm. so yeah he has i I read uh gucci man's book too and that's how what he was talking about that like um before he went to prison he was just didn't value his money and he would just throw it away on dumb shit Mm -hmm. and then when he was in prison he started reflecting on his life and seeing you know i'm saying how what led him up to that and he started taking accountability for his actions and then he started just running up and down the stairs up you know what i'm saying from the bottom to the top every day he would just run up and down stairs while everybody was chilling in the day room watching tv yeah that's what he was doing and then he just started doing that and then it led to him just uh working out exercising more and then from when he got out that's why people see the new gucci man now but mm-hmm. it started with him just doing them steps running up and down them stairs hold up baby lucky you gonna come through with the gucci man glow up <laughs> <laughs> oh, you at? it's gonna it's it's gonna it's gonna do you some good baby but yeah. you know you know you can relate to discipline right Coach, yeah yeah yeah, I mean, yeah yeah Coates is on a, a keto diet and in, in yeah. intermediate fasting. Mm-hmm. That's what it's called. Intermediate so fasting. Yeah. Yeah. That shit takes a lot of discipline. Yeah, so, it does. did you see a difference from like before before you started doing this and like did you see a difference in like your discipline and like getting your schedules and and your eating right and and all that? It's it's hard for me to gauge that um, because I don't think I really had problems in those areas to begin with. Um, not to say whether or not I, w- I improved in that type of thing. I guess I guess so. You know what I mean. Um, but uh, as y'all know, I also take Adderall daily, <laughs> and, I, and I started doing them like kind of around the same time. So it's hard for me to determine which was which. Yeah, yeah. which one is actually benefiting me in what in what ways. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So uh, I don't know. But yeah, as far as just. Uh, uh, like developing the skill of being disciplined um yeah I've, it's it's you know just like how you're talking about it's it's something you you start doing uh, a little bit here and there or like gucci man was yeah. talking about running up the stairs or whatever yeah it's these small things you just you just go for it yeah. and then as as you become uh acclimated to the small things you kind of step it up and then step it up and step it up yeah. and the next thing you know you're just full full-fledged yeah. you're in it you know yeah it just takes you gotta uh keep doing those little things over and over and over again Mm-hmm. Well, uh, so let me ask you this at what point in your life did you start to reflect back on uh you say gucci man and when he was in prison he would think about all the money he started mm-hmm. fucking off at what point in your life did you start looking at things that way uh I think just as I got older and then having more kids, it's more responsibilities because, you know, I got a a lot more uh, people to feed and take care of, you know what I'm saying? So I had to be more cautious of how I do my, uh, spend my money and how I just, I had to be more thoughtful, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't just live the way I used to live when I had no worries or no responsibilities, when it was just me by myself, you know what I'm saying? When it was just me by myself, I would spend the money as fast as I got it, you know what I'm saying? And just didn't care but now it's like okay i gotta do something else but back in those days though when you used to spend the money as fast as you got it did you ever spend your money so quick and then look at what's in your pocket or look at what might be in your bank and be like damn it's gone already did you did any at any point did that ever like strike you as Man, I'm doing too much. Or I need to change. No, nah, because and not nah, because I didn't really have a lot of bills and I didn't really have uh see now when that shit happens, if that shit still happens, I get a check for a thousand dollars today and be gone tomorrow. But it goes on bills, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And it goes on the th- stuff that I need. Right. Before that would just go in the club, just spend it on buying drinks for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then it's it's just I, w- I wouldn't really care, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have that no um a lot of bills or structure i yeah. would say it was just i was just living for the moment for the day you know what i'm saying yeah 
So, but now I can't do that no more. So now it's like I had to take a step back and just reevaluate everything and just see, okay, I need to uh, be more uh, in charge of my finances discipline. and more, more disciplined with my mm. finances. And so doing that, I realized that I had to be more disciplined with my body as well. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, and how about you, Kelly? I know you're young as it is, Kelly, but how was a younger Kelly at managing money? I was really good actually i i did do a lot of like spending money like i would have that one day where i would walk in the galleria and i would be like all right i got four racks i'm about to blow it all mm. and i'd go into stores i had no budget like i was just like okay and if i go over the four rack i got money in the bank you know yeah. what i'm saying so yeah. like i would swipe but i was always good at budgeting i think the thing with me is i worked hard like I I was getting money, but I was getting it, and I had to put in a lot of work for it. Like it wasn't like lucky. Like I could just go in a booth, rap, and then like mm. turn it in. And I had to really like be up at night, be up in the morning, take care of the baby. You know, like and I had to really clock in. You know, I, like when I had the job at um, the shoe store, it was like I was doing that, and then I had school, and then I had you know my job at night that i was either waitressing or dancing or whatnot and it's not easy like i feel like y'all see it as strippers make easy money but it's hard like i had a whole baby i had to leave at home you know it's like y'all don't see the behind the scenes of having to go in there and like get dressed get glam and sometimes you don't want to do that sometimes you're sick and you got to go in because you got yeah. bills to pay you know or like you got stuff to pay and and yeah i would but i was real good with saving money like when i made a lot of money mm. i'm like all right this is gonna be my play money and this is gonna be my put up money like my emergency money Money. oh that's dope so i always knew to draw a line and and then i mean i was always good but the thing the question you asked him like did you ever have a moment where like damn i need to relax yeah. i did and it was when car okay so when carla passed away i know i bring her up a lot but when that happened in my life that kind of made me realize like damn money really ain't shit you know because i had all this money saved mm. and it still couldn't bring her back i gave her mama money you know i i, I did everything to make money to help for the funeral cost and all that but it just felt like it, it re like i had to reflect on i'm sitting here leaving my child and you know having my mama take care of her at night and anything could happen to me like what if i don't come back mm. you know and i'm missing that one thing that is like loving on my child and like nurturing her and doing all that and i'm yeah i'm helping my mom pay the bills or yeah i'm taking care of my bills and I, she got the latest jordans she got all the like you know all the good stuff and i got all the good makeup all the good clothes but that's that's probably like the point where it hit me like I need to be more disciplined and there's more areas in my life where I need to like nourish and slowly but surely I started getting into the gym I started going to church I started like getting into different like areas of my life that I needed to like water like a plant you know like it was like I started watering different areas of my life and I think that's where I started growing mentally and physically I started getting more and fit and stuff like Mm -hmm. I know I've said it before whenever we met I was trying to discipline my schedule and I used to tell him all that all the time like he's like are you sure you're gonna be able to be with me you know and I, <laughs> he would tell me that I'm like I'm very disciplined like you 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 you'd be surprised how disciplined I am because I was I was in like a schedule I'd wake up this is what I would do and I had a schedule you know what I'm saying like go work out come back work do this do that go pick her up from school come back work 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 then go work out again go to sleep you mm. know what i'm saying yeah so discipline was a big thing for me so seeing him like transforming is like it makes me smile so big because i can't wait to have this baby we're gonna go hard <laughs> <laughs> so do you do the does the life coach help you as well or is yeah. it just specifically lucky well he talks to lucky mainly but a lot of the things i do agree on and i can get some stuff out of it but yeah he does he knows that you know i'm the backbone or whatnot like he sees lucky talks to lucky and at the end of the day like 
you know, when you're in a relationship, like, he's like, all right, go get Kelly and sit her down next yeah, to you. Yeah, because he knows that we're just, we're, she's not just, like, uh, in a relationship. We're, like, business partners, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we do our YouTube thing together and our, uh, we're finna do a motivational album together, which that was the coach's, one of the coach's ideas, too. You know what I'm saying? That we should do a motivational album. So, there, have you ever heard of Dr. Eric Thomas? He's uh, a black dude. He's like a motivational speaker. I don't think I've heard well, of anyway, him. Well, anyway, he does that, too. Like, he had a, he, he puts, like, uh, motivational albums out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and he, he does, he does pretty damn good, too. It's kind of like how y'all did that. What, what was that song? That Don't Be a Hater All Your Life song when she was at the end talking. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. kind of like what we're, dib- yeah, dabbling in. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I'm interested to, to hearing how that's going to come out. I've never listened to a motivational album before. Oh, because we're going to get well, you right. Well, see, what it is is he goes and does, he does, like, speeches. Seminars. And, like, he talks to, like, uh, football players, coach uh, teams, football teams, basketball teams. He talks to uh, college people and he does his own events where you can pay and go watch him speak mm-hmm. and he sells it out he be he he's like he's like one of the top motivational speakers like a tony robbins or something yeah. and um the way they do it i think they just take the sound bites from his motivational speeches mm. and then they put it on a beat and then they like chop it up or some it's not him rapping he don't rap you right. know what i'm saying it's just just like his little sound bites from his like best little things that he says you know yeah, it'd be lit if yeah, you, it sounds if dope. you listen to it, like it's, it's some like, shit you can be in the gym listening to. You know what I'm saying? It gets yeah. you crunk. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it is it like each song has a specific topic? Uh, yeah. Topic. It could yeah. be like one. He has one called "I Grind," and he's talking about how he wakes up early at three in the morning, and he just you know what I'm saying. He's like these young whippersnappers think they're gonna beat me. How you gonna beat me? I get up at three. What time you waking up? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like on some shit like that. But see, with the difference with ours is I rap, so it's gonna be us talking. But then in between that talking, I'll probably put a verse. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or you know what I'm saying? Just put some rapping in there as well. Yeah, that's cool, man. Set you apart from from everybody else, then. Yeah. If you if you incorporate that to it. I was gonna ask you some coach before I forget because we were talking about discipline and stuff, and you said you didn't know whether to determine well which one. It was helping. It was helping. You ever thought about tapering off your Adderall, like slowly getting off of it? Well, there are times where I just forget to take it, um, which is kind of stupid because Adderall is supposed to help your memory. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are there are those times where I forget to take it, and I can catch myself. I don't. I don't. I don't take Adderall because uh, I feel like. I'm dumb or anything like that. I take it because without it, I don't feel driven in a lot of ways. Yeah. So there'll be days where I'm at the house, I, f- I forget to take it, and I can tell just because I don't want to get up and do nothing. Yeah. I just want to sit there and just just melt into the couch or whatever. This nigga said melt into <laughs> the couch. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I... I have no drive to do anything. Well, that's not a good way okay. to live. And, so, and you you probably need to do some exercise in your damn cell. It's, it, you know, you're probably saying? right. That's no, wait. I was about to challenge you. We about to challenge yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. We're going to challenge When we drop this album, this. when we drop this album or whatnot, you're going to be one of the first ones to, to get your hands on it, all right? Okay. And y'all hearing it here first, Stay True Sunday podcast. Lucky and Kelly are challenging Coast for 30 days. 30 days is a good number. 30 days you're gonna get up you're gonna listen to our little motivational album and try at how many times a day do you take the adderall once once okay let's skip a day or two out of the week Mm -hmm. but you gotta talk to your doctor but on on the days you (laughs) skip though you gotta do something to get you out you gotta tell yourself okay i'm gonna go run around the block i'm gonna run for 15 minutes that's what what i was gonna tell you the day that you're gonna skip this adderall you're gonna play our album you're gonna get up and you're gonna run and start doing something like that's gonna help you even when it's be cold motivated. Outside. Cause mm-hmm. see, I don't like to. It's Without not something you like to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to get up and go run. It's not like something I like to do. I've never been that type of person. Like I was never athletic or in sports or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because so it's nothing that I like to do. But but after I'm done doing it, it just makes your day. It just sets the whole uh, direction of your day in a different direction that it would have went if you didn't go run. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I didn't wake up and go exercise 
exercise or, or do the things that I do in the morning, my day would be different. You know mm. what I'm saying? So it'll change your direction of the course of the rest of your day if you wake up early and go yeah. run. Yeah, it pumps you up. Like once you get back home from running wherever you go or whatever, it, it, it it's like, all right, what's next? You know what I'm saying? But not only that, like when I heard you say that, it kind of made me feel like you, I feel like it's already implanted in you that you think that you need it to be driven yeah mm. but you don't you don't it's all psychological so you have to break out of that habit and we're challenging because no i used to i used to lean on things like everybody has something that they it's like yeah. their crutch i used to drink a lot you know what i'm saying yeah. i feel like i couldn't go do a show if i wasn't drinking i yeah, couldn't the same perform. way yep i couldn't uh or i would smoke i used to smoke a lot you know what i'm saying i feel like i wouldn't be able to uh, be able to just you know what I'm saying? Have a normal day if I wasn't smoking. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. It's just crutches that we lean on. But yeah, you got to just overcome that. And you got to find out of something else. Uh, you got, every, everything is habits. You just you have negative habits and positive habits. You just got to replace that negative habit with a positive habit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sure, we finna start a whole little gym. What is it called? Lucha Gang uh, Boot Camp. Hey, hey. <laughs> we finna be like, up, down, middle. You know what I'm <laughs> Jump around, spin. <laughs> no, I'm serious though, man. Like, and you, you probably won't, you probably won't see the effects after a couple of days of doing it. It has to, it's, it, you got to do it every day. Yeah, you know repetition. what I'm saying? Yeah, and then after those. 30 days you're gonna be like oh okay now i see i can see the light and then do it another 30 days and then by the time you know you look back and you're gonna you're gonna feel like way better you know i can't wait yeah. i i know i i can't wait but you gotta do it close. the reason why people like those um get weight get what they call lose weight quick plans or or gym memberships don't work is because people just stop they just they mm. don't they don't fall through they don't yeah. come through all the way to the end yeah. because it does get hard people get busy shit comes up life happens you just got other things to do and you get busy but if you could just put make that your health and your mind and your body your priority mm, come you know, through like no me. like like in the morning before, <laughs> well, I grab my, before i grab my phone in the morning and my life before i get on my phone in the morning check in Instagram or <laughs> anything, I make sure I go handle my what I gotta do in the morning. No, you know he what I'm does. Saying? He wakes up, he goes, turns on the coffee machine, gets in the shower, comes back in the room, gets his phone to read his book. He reads what, like ten? Pages? I read. I, I read a chapter a day in and the morning. And then drinks his coffee while he's reading. And then when he's done with that, he comes back in the room, gets dressed, Every and then morning. takes off I, running. I, I pray in the morning. I read a chapter of, of a motivational book or a, a self-discipline book or a personal development book, and then I go run, and then I come back and get on my Instagram or check my social media. Or Most people, when they roll out of bed, the first thing they do is get on their phone and start scrolling up and down Instagram with their breath guilty. still stinking. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I would do that for years, you know what I'm saying? And it just fucks your head up because if you if you just look at some fucked up shit on the or or see somebody else living better than you or you read a comment that you don't like and then it, you're like fuck i gotta get just, up and go to work just, <laughs> that that is gonna be the course of the rest of your day you know what i'm saying yeah we're now if you took that away and you went and did something positive like run and read and you pray you know what i'm saying and then when you get back and then when you start the rest of your day your whole day gonna be different mm. you know what i'm saying that's and, dope. And Let's hear it one time and, and, again. <laughs> How do they do it on drink chips? <laughs> oh, the air horn. Yeah, we need to get an air horn here, Mike. Right? Uh, y'all send us one. The link to our fan mail is down in the description. Nah, don't, don't send play. one. Don't, that's my least favorite part of drink chips. Is that? <laughs> that? Come on, you gotta hype them up. One time. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Well, now I I accept the challenge so whenever y'all have that yeah uh, that album. march yeah no i mean you don't gotta wait till then i if i was you i'd well, part of the challenge that's yeah. why i said <laughs> so it's for a challenge, part right. Our challenge all right man you I, I but you. you know what you can do is start working out that way you build your stamina up to when the challenge starts yeah you don't feel like fuck why am i doing this yeah Yeah. because like whenever i first started um running man i wouldn't be able to run around that whole leg the first time i did it i came home told everybody in the house i did i ran they were just like thinking there's no big deal no we weren't we weren't thinking like it was no big deal the thing is like he told us the day of and then the next day he's like did i tell you i ran around the whole leg (laughs) so like he was really really proud which we are proud of him but yeah yeah that was a milestone in my uh health development and it is hard 
hard to run that lake, man. To run the whole thing without stopping, yeah. That shit's hard. And I would walk, and then I would run like halfway. But I would see other people do it, you know what I'm saying? So I know it could be done. It'd be like ladies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Older than me. And then it makes you feel like shit when you're just like... Walking. I know, and then you didn't even you. run. <laughs> you didn't even run that far, and they didn't already went two, way, two laps around, and they're like passing you up. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, man, if they could do it, I could do it. Because we would just walk. Walk, you know what I'm saying? That's where we started. We would just walk, just to walk. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But walk is better than nothing. It's better to sit on your ass. But running is it does something different when you run and get your heart rate bumping yeah. early in the morning when it's cold, especially. Yeah, it does something different. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try that out, man. I used to a long time ago. I used to call myself taking walks or whatever. Really, I was just walking from my apartment down to the store to buy this cigarettes. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I did that walking to go buy a cigarette. Like that's it's, yeah. it's counterproductive. Yeah, that walking really don't do shit. I do more walk walk around the mall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Walk around H E B. Yeah, but now, nah, but you know, I, I I'm pretty active for the most part in my day because you know with with the job that I have, like the most the majority of my day, I'm on my feet. I'm moving around. I'm walking from here to there. Yeah, you know. So uh, I feel like just from doing that, I notice. Uh, not only uh, with in addition to my weight loss because I move around so much on a daily basis my stamina has yeah. already improved in that sense but as far as doing the running and making sure that my heart rate yeah. goes up like I don't really look at it like that which I should start yeah. doing yeah and I did until until the when I felt my heart rate go up and I just noticed how my days would be better you know what I'm saying and, and yeah I just said I gotta keep it up Mm -hmm. gotta keep it up and i'm trying to uh inspire people you know what i'm saying with my the way we do our youtubes and we're trying to inspire people to uh you know what i'm saying to be uh more family orientated and stuff yeah i feel like i can inspire them too with being uh more healthy and taking care of my body and just motivated getting them on the right track you know what i'm saying and i got little boys my sons i want them to you know what i'm saying I don't want them to be just sitting around not doing shit. I want them to, I got to lead by example. I want them to follow my footsteps. And I got daughters, so I got to be in shape in case of these young punks <laughs> want to get out of line one day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe maybe y'all should extend that challenge that you that you gave to me to everybody in the Lucha Gang. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and we just might make, do that. Yeah, make it a broader challenge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I will say, I will say, though, the, the motivational stuff talks that he does the videos i don't know if you ever catched one coast he does one like every now and then dur during i the try week. to do them every day but then sometimes i just don't the do other them. day he did one man i would listen to it right i hardly ever listened to them and i listened to it i was like man i, can, I need to get my ass up and pull clothes <laughs> i need to get up and pull some clothes if i don't start right now i ain't gonna be able to do it so it works like if yeah. he had an impact on me which i'm with him all the time but it's just like just by listening to that one video it was was like man and i have okay so i have a pile of socks i hate folding socks mm. and then i just put, like throw them in a pile and then i'm just like whenever y'all need socks go find a pair because yeah, yeah. i hate matching them and it's so many so that day i literally after i watched that video i set up my ass on the floor that's funny and i fucking <laughs> paired all the socks up and i was like there you go everybody has socks now see and it was like two months that I hadn't done that shit. Shit, y'all need to, <laughs> Whatever video that is, tag me in it. I got, I got a pile of clothes at the house right now I gotta go through, and I'm trying not to. Man, it sucks. Yeah, yeah, man. And sometimes I don't even be knowing what to say, but it's just, I'm telling you, I be reading them books, and then I, from reading them books, and then just having a clear mind where I'm not like, say, drinking the night before and waking up not feeling, you know, feeling like hungover and stuff, yeah. I wouldn't have the shit to say. But because, my mind is clear and I'm more focused I, I know what to say you know what I'm saying mm. that's dope man I like to I'm a man, I don't I don't really read on a daily basis neither but I know I should yeah you should see a lot of time before I would read stuff like like Pimp C's uh, book or you know what I'm saying like rapper's book like a, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying shit like gangster books like I read like all kind of shit like i read uh My michael max's autobiography i read um the Le real lucky luciano's uh autobiography or, or a book on him mm -hmm. so i would read like gangster shit or rappers but it was all like it wasn't nothing like uh personal development or mm. something like that you know what i'm saying or self-discipline so i found 
uh, the book first book was uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill that book and then um, there was another one uh, the 48 Laws of Power I read that one so then it started expanding my mind to other uh, other things to read and then it's hard it's read. hard to really like pick up the habit of reading because these try to put me onto it and mm. i did start but then with everything that you have going on throughout the day you get lose and some and some of the books are written from a long time ago so it's kind of hard to like get into it because it's just written like like for instance there's a book called uh as a man think it that i got kingston reading i already read it and i got kingston reading like 10 pages a day but it was written like in the 1920s you know what i'm saying mm. or like some of 1930s or something but it's a good book but just because of the way it's written it's you got to be you know what I'm saying it's kind of hard but the book I just got done reading is called A Slight Edge and that was the book that um, the coach uh, uh, referred me to and uh, when I read that one it was like up to date you yeah. know what I'm saying and it talks about how the little things you do every day determine the rest of your life and it, people don't realize that it's like so this dude was he was a uh, dropout college dropout and he was a bum and the, on the beat like a beach bum and he wasn't really um, he was broke you know what I'm saying he had a little old beat up car and then he went back to uh, Albuquerque where he was from because he got tired of just being a bum on the beach in Daytona you know what I'm saying mm. and uh, he tried to start his own business and then he was successful with it but then the market crashed and he lost everything he got his car repoed and he just didn't have nothing you know what I'm saying yeah and then he just uh, started uh, like examining his life like saying like okay how did I make it from up here and then end up no, right back, back here. here you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and he just started thinking about all the little things he would do and then uh, that's what he came up with that mo most people that uh, are in life when they get they're either like struggling or they're just barely surviving or and then success up here but when they get to just surviving then they start stop doing the things that got them up from out of struggling you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and then they go right back down so he realized that's and then he just he wrote a book he made a book and that was a book that I read and yeah it's like that's it's like a that's a life changing book The Slight Edge I would recommend that book it's, it's kind of like edge. comfortable right like a lot of people get comfortable yeah they get comfortable in any area of your life you start getting comfortable mm. that's the word yeah and then shit starts changing you had to make me a list man of, of some books i should that, grab. I, that's the first one i would read the slight edge because i've always thought about uh thinking you know i should start reading um but for no other purpose other than just because i make music because i'm an artist i just i just think that i should read to kind of build on my vocabulary yeah fuck whatever the book is actually about <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah that's that's the way my mentality is towards reading never do i think you could learn something that i could actually pick yeah. up a book and learn things right i would read for entertainment when <laughs> i when i when i think of reading i think of my sister my sister uh, she, and to this day she's still awesome she loves to read i think of like uh the harry, harry potter, potter type yeah. books you know what i'm saying i don't i don't give a damn about <laughs> none of them kind of stories you know what i'm saying but when i think of reading that's what i think about Mm -hmm. part of it you know what I'm saying yeah. never did I think I can get a motivational book or yeah, something like that exactly yeah me so, too I would just read for entertainment purposes it's so. funny. and most people do it's funny because for Christmas when, when I was looking for a gift for you I looked at a book and I was like should we get him this but it was a keto like recipe book oh, and like yeah. a lifestyle keto lifestyle yeah, yeah. book and I was like nah mm -hmm. he ain't gonna use this nah, I wouldn't have. <laughs> Yeah, no, I get all those tips on the on the old YouTube. What's up, YouTube? Make sure y'all like and subscribe and ring the bell and comment and. Uh, hey! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you came through. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, but you know what? I'm glad we talked about this um, because life is too short, and basically, you just need need to stop taking everything for granted because you just never know. I know y'all heard about. Um, Kobe mm -hmm. and not only him but his daughter and all those other people that were on the helicopter and it's just sad like in a blink of an eye you know I think the story was he was coming from his uh, daughter's practice practice well it, I don't think it was his daughter's but I don't know it's some type of league or like 
I don't know, basketball league that he coaches or he funds or I don't know really much about it. I'm not going to sit up here and act like I know. But, I mean, I wasn't a big fan of him or whatnot. But, you know, Kobe is like a Kobe Bryant. Come on now. He's a legend. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was known. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just it's sad, you know, and to see how successful he was and how family oriented he was and everything that he lived by and then like i said in a blink of an eye so you just need to stop taking life for granted not that he did but just people out there yeah and start making changes because you never know when your last day can mm -hmm. come just for the record i wore them kobe bryant shoes man I, I would wear my kobe's remember you would laugh at me I, he never wore them with me. I would, no, but, she would see pictures of but me. But I would see pictures. I, I had, I had like about, I would say my about three is, different pairs. My, I liked them. I, nobody would wear them. Have you seen them? They're like, they look like boxing shoes. No, no, they're no, like, no, no, no. They're actual basketball shoes. Yeah, but they, they're like high, high tops. No, they have low tops. They have low tops. I'm talking about tops. the ones I had. But so the thing, the reason why I would make fun of him, Kobe, you know what I'm saying? R.I.P. Kobe. <laughs> I don't, I don't know Kobe's because I had a pair of Kobe's before. I had low tops though. But, but um, I just had to throw that in there. <laughs> I mean, I worked at a shoe store, like Man, I said. I'm telling you, those are the most comfortable. They're more comfortable than Jordans. Jordans are gonna make your feet sweat. They're too. They're too thick. They're Jordans too aren't to play with, though. Those Kobe's that you would wear are actual like athletes. That's why they're comfortable. Shoes. But the thing, the reason why I used to make fun of him. Look, I have to clear the record because I don't. Have, <laughs> I don't want to have you put me in a bad spot right there, you know. But he would wear these high top Kobe's with some shorts. Wait, black or or. Or, or purple, purple and yellow, and yellow purple, and, purple and, and yellow Kobe's with some a blue shirt and some like I green no shorts. Shirt <laughs> I had no blue shirt on. <laughs> so I'm just like, baby, like I had to come into your life and step your no, swag up. I also had like there was a there was another uh, pair. They were like a spring. Matter of fact, I seen I went on the internet to see how much they're selling. They're selling for like eight hundred dollars. They're like a spring uh, color. They're like that, but they're like white with like neon green, neon orange, like like spring colors you know what i'm saying mm. and that same shoe though with the high top the purple and gold ones i had but i had both pair i don't know what happened to them but i think yeah. i threw them away <laughs> Man, they, were like, they, were, they were like 200 no, i know they're shoes. expensive i know they're expensive but no it's just that you know i had to you know, give you a couple tips on mixing and matching colors because <laughs> before i got with you i used to see pictures of him just not not matching at all <laughs> and sometimes to this day i'm just like baby you got i can't let you go out like that <laughs> but no yeah so see my new stylist Kobe Bryant, man. Moment of silence for R. him. R.I.P. Yeah. Because I'm just trying to tell you, life is too short. Where were you when you heard about it? I remember, well, where were we? Where were we were we right doing? here. We were eating, yeah. and then I think Lucky was the first one to say, oh, my God, Kobe died. Yeah, Elijah texted me, and my son texted me and told me. Mm hmm no nah, lucky is the one that told me no you know what i do remember what we were doing he had just came back from popeyes and him and Gigi went to popeyes so when he came back we were eating the popeyes and he was like what kobe died and so when i started trying to get on the internet to see what really happened and then i go to see that they her nickname was Gigi. Mm. it just broke my heart because i'm just like damn because they just left to go get this popeyes mm -hmm. and i was telling kingston i was just like see this is why you have to like not be mean or like not have an attitude and be mindful of the last thing you just told her because before they left he was like being mean to Gigi like yeah. you little you know bum or whatever they do but they're kids but I was just telling him like what would have been the last thing you told Gigi like if that would have been dad and Gigi not making it back wow. you know what I'm saying so yeah. you really have to like be mindful of these things because this is real life and things like that happen I mean you're not gonna be here forever and you just mm -hmm. have to like really appreciate your family and love and put positive out there because it's just you would have been all the way messed up mentally you know yeah. mm. and you just gotta hold tight to those good memories and make good memories instead of bad ones yeah so yeah it's tough man it's really sad yeah now uh yesterday was my late fiance's uh, it would have been her 37th birthday, oh. right? Um, and just talking about the Kobe thing and the last thing that you, you say to the people and before you lose them, 
you know i i think back to the last thing that she and i were speaking on we had like a like a solid hour and a half two hour long conversation and it was rare that we we speak for those extended periods of time yeah you know what i'm saying but this was one of those times it was the last conversation we had and man we just put everything out on the table you know we expressed to each other everything we was thinking everything we was feeling and at the end of the conversation when we finally hung up oh y'all on the phone yeah uh when we hung up i put my phone down and i just felt so relieved man because i expressed to her all these things that maybe i didn't know how to articulate before Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying um so it, it felt good and I felt it. So it wasn't on a bad note. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Oh, that's good. It was yeah, it was it was wonderful. And then and then the next day is, you know, it, I lost her the next day. But if it weren't for that opportunity to just get everything out to her, I would feel I can't imagine how I would feel. Yeah. So to your point, you, you know, the last thing that you say to somebody is the type of thing that'll stick with you yeah I, I feel that wholeheartedly you know what yeah. I mean so it's I, I, I think everybody should be good to each other you know when you when you recognize somebody as being worthy of of any sort of relationship whether it be the relationship like y'all have or it be a friendship like I have with y'all mm-hmm. you know it's 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 a good thing to just express to to the people closest to you yeah you know how you feel and yeah. and and if if there's any any animosity if there's any problems man let's address it and then let's move on mm-hmm. you know let's keep moving forward i'm big on that man cuz i hate i hate having that like knot in your throat or in your chest just that feeling of like what are we gonna, like I, confrontation or anything i hate that feeling and i know life is too short again and so i i hate that feeling so yeah i agree always put it out in the air try and move on from it try to come to an agreement somehow compromise even if y'all don't end up being as close or you know or the relationship doesn't go back to being how it used to be as long as y'all just like let it go like turn the chapter turn the turn the page and move on to the next chapter and just take that deep breath and embrace the growth of you know it's a new chapter in whatever friendship relationship and just going about life differently other than holding on to stuff and letting it basically stain your heart yeah. in life so yeah i'm big on that and damn i got a i got a problem with doing that myself though because it's hard i hold grudges like for real for real it's hard. I, I am so <laughs> good at holding grudges just, with people. It, it just it keeps you're you're hurting yourself when you just hold on to it. You gotta just learn to forgive and let it go. It doesn't mean you gotta go and you know what I'm saying be best friends with somebody who's hurt you or something. But you gotta learn to forgive and just let it go because if not, you're just hurting yourself. You're holding on to that anger and that animosity is just inside of you. Mm. You gotta be able to let it go so it won't hurt you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? it's hard coast you know what and i've i've been there to where i hold grudges but i learned i don't even know how i changed that because i don't know i used to be talking hella shit i'm like i don't give a fuck fuck you know what i'm saying and it was just like and it's out of pain or not pain hurt Mm. out of like you feel disappointed that you got to that point with whoever or that things are going that way and a lot of times when you do talk about it and put it out in the air you realize that it ain't even as big as you think it is or you feel it is Mm. it's really just either a misunderstanding or and if it was something big and that really really happened and affected you like at least you're putting your foot down and being like you know i don't stand for that you know so i'm letting you know right now i don't stand for that i don't like it i don't believe in that and i feel like let down or unappreciated and you know you want to be cool with me or you want to be a part of my life or if i'm gonna have you in my life like we need to have that understanding you know yeah instead of like just swallowing your pride and just walking away and then having that bitter taste in your mouth mm. for the yeah. rest of your months or life or whatever because it's just not it's not healthy yeah, yeah. it's not 
Yeah, you gotta just be able to be like, I forgive you. I just don't fuck with you. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. And you just keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? It's like and it, I don't hate like me. I don't hate nobody. I don't got beef with nobody. But that don't mean I fuck with everybody, and mm. I just want to go kick it with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. You I'm, can't. No, you can't do it. You just don't want to. <laughs> that's probably true. Because yeah, it, your pride. It's your pride. It's, it's, it's your, your ego. Your that's that's the word. Ego. ego. Yeah. Your ego will stop you from doing a lot of things. Mm. A lot of things. Even, even good things. Your ego will stop you from doing it. I think Lucky has preached on this before. Mm-hmm. Ego. Yeah, you got to let it go. Man, I might have to look for that video, too. <laughs> no, yeah, and and he he told me about it. I I that stuck stuck with me because I feel like my ego is not really always getting in the way, but sometimes it can because I'm just like I'm too good for this. Sometimes you know, just not all the time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he was saying like your ego will stop you from doing little things like. As a matter of fact, that was in one of the books that I read too. That's where I got that from. The like uh, answering. Like, let's say we're in a room and there's like somebody speaking and they ask a question. You know what I'm saying? And your ego, you know the answer, mm. but you're just like, I'm going to just wait for somebody else or to answer. Some, you know? Or say <laughs> when you go into a room full of people and instead of uh, striking a conversation, you just be quiet and act like you're, you're shy and don't want to talk. That's your ego. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just striking a conversation with another human being you know what i'm saying mm. it's your ego your it, your ego can stop you from doing a lot of things that book was called the first steps to wealth and, and it's Danny funny because after he told me that i remember this sunday this past sunday we went to church and i walked up to the like the creamer section and, and the coffee mm-hmm. we were like by the coffee area and i walked up and there was this white man right there I don't know why I just said he was white, but (laughs) there was a man standing there, you know, putting sugar and creamer in his coffee. And I was just like, I could just like ignore him, you know, because it was a little awkward. But I was just like, hi, how are you doing today? You know, that's not letting your ego get in the way because it it made me when I walked up, I was like, maybe I should wait till he's done. But I didn't. I just walked straight up and I was like, I'm just going to speak. Hi, how are you doing? And uh, while I'm putting I mean, my feet, you can't do that everywhere, but we were at church. No, nah, I do it everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you can't like, just be in the hood at a corner store and just start oh, yeah, talking no. to somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I didn't strike a conversation, but I at least greeted him and I, you know, made that connection to make it less like, say awkward. Say, for instance, you're at Walmart and the checkout lady's right there, old lady looking like she's just tired and she has her name tag right there. You know what I'm saying? You can call her by her name and tell her, I hope you're having a good day or something like Thank that. Thank you so much for your help, Diane. And yeah, I call her by her name. You that, know? That's what that book, The First Steps to Wealth, that's another good book too, First Steps to Wealth. But that's what it was saying in there, that you got to be able to do that and not let your ego get in the way. Yeah. You yeah. basically just got to look people in the eye and be yourself. Because yeah. you know you don't come from a, like a malicious intent or like a, you, you're not trying to do. Because when you show love and you put that positive energy out, it's going to come back to you. You know what I'm saying? It's just like if you, you plant a seed, it's in, in the spring or whatever in the fall it's gonna have a plant you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that's the same thing when you put them positive vibes out there and you help somebody or you so you brighten somebody's day your day gonna get brightened you know what i'm saying mm. but if you just walk around with a mad look on your face you, you see oh, she does this too she'll be smiling walking in h-e-b or you see people at the airport or <laughs> grocery store or something they just All walk the around time. with a serious face you know what i'm saying but we'll try to just walk around and just smile at them you know what i'm saying <laughs> just smile he, sometimes he's like, babe, what, what, what did you bring? <laughs> well, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> she, she be overdoing it though. She just walk around with a big old smile. No, like, but I'm not like purposely. I don't do it because I got all these damn shit in my I mouth. Naturally... So I don't want them to think I'm trying to show off my teeth. You all know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't do it, but Kelly does. No, I and it's not like sometimes I'm doing it and he's like, "Will you stop?" And I'm just like, "What am I doing?" Like I naturally do it, and <laughs> and then when he points it out, it makes me even want to go harder. Like <laughs> shit, yeah, I'm happy. I'm alive. Shit, how are you doing today? Right. You know, <laughs> and it's funny because I'll I'll smile and then I'll notice somebody that sees me smiling and they'll smile at me and then they'll pay attention to Houston and actually like have a vision of my family like yeah. walking in rather than just walking past us you know what I'm saying so it's like yeah it, it makes me feel good honestly when I, I I'm smiling and I don't even notice I'm just like putting positive vibes out there and I'm yeah. just like hey 
day. Mm. And sometimes I even like have a song stuck in my head in H E B and I start dancing or singing it and he's like, Kelly, stop it <laughs> 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 Or you know they be playing music sometimes and right. I'm like, I wanna know that song and I start singing and he's like, Oh well you <laughs> <laughs> He Homer Simpsons me. Yeah. He's like, Oh you little <laughs> No but well, if any any of what y'all are talking about is an indication as to what is going to end up on the motivational album, I'm I'm already excited for it. Oh yeah, we're gonna take some sound bites from this podcast right now today and put it on a beat. You know what I'm saying? That's how we're gonna make the album. And then in, so basically, that's gonna be the hooks. You know what I'm saying? Of those little sound bites, and mm-hmm. then I'm gonna just put a verse in between it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's gonna be the album. Huh? Yeah, that's gonna be cool, man. Yeah, all these little gems like that. Yeah. Get that to the people. We're trying to make the world a better place, man. There's, mm-hmm. you gotta, there's already a bunch of negativity out there, and and it's it's fucked up because the kids. That's what they're they're they they're, they're growing on, up on. Yeah. yeah, they're growing up on all that shit on social media. All the the images Lil of Pump, these, all these young Uzi. the young rappers that they're not just that. It's like they're like fucking gay and shit. There's a bunch of gay shit going on. I mean, I'm not got anything against gay people. If you gay, you gay. But I'm saying the kids. They're you know what I'm saying they're growing up in that in that. You know when culture, you're yeah you know when you're saying? growing up you're like should I experience in this and then like you just. It, it's just like drugs, you know. Kind yeah, of. I just feel like they you should it's just let really the kids you. be kids. You know what I'm saying? Like how they're in the commercials on TV, and um, <sighs> it's just it's just all out there in the in the open for mm. these kids to see it. You know what I'm saying? And, and I mean, if you if you grow <laughs> if you grow and that's that's your preference, that's your preference. But if I'm sitting down watching TV with my son, and then we're trying to look at TV, and on the commercial, there's like two dudes sitting down kissing. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It just sends a bad message to him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I see that. What the part that I have a hard time like just deciphering in my mind, like how is this a thing? Is when they talk about these little kids, man. They they. They can't even like pick out an outfit for themselves to wear for the day, but they want to say these little kids identify as something else. And I'm not specifically speaking a boy identifies as a girl. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about I'm talking about uh, identify as a animal of some sort, or my child identifies as, as some sort of inanimate object. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and there's this whole politically correct thing behind it like you can't you can't call my son you can't call him a boy because he don't feel like he is one he feels like he's yeah because he's a part of a kid and don't know better yeah, he you know feel like he's part of nature so yeah. you you have to respect that and don't call my son a, a little boy oh well, yeah they and it's like tripping. it's like bro how do y'all and, get to and this it's not just the gay shit it's it's the like the, <laughs> stop saying gay well, shit i'm talking about it's not <laughs> just that it, it makes well, it because sound, i feel like i what well, we went left with it no but, because it well, well you started yeah. it yeah. Like, <laughs> nigga. i meant to say what i meant to say you were like is, all these gay there's shit. a bunch of negativity in the world and we try to fight it with positivity and and i wasn't saying talking just i didn't mean it just that i'm talking about like the gang the gang culture how these rappers there's a bunch of they're trying to uh be gang members after they become rappers or after they become famous they mm. want to be drug dealers and rappers and they, they just about got the it. street life basically. yeah and they're trying to glorify that when most people that are really in that life are trying to get out you know what i'm saying and if they had the opportunity to be a rich and famous rapper you know what i'm saying they would take it in a minute they wouldn't try to still be in the streets but most people that are really stuck in there that don't know how to rap that are like really involved in that life they want to get out of that shit they don't, they don't want to be there they're, shit. they're there because they that's all they know i feel hella weird going back to my hood like yeah. when we drive by my hood and we're like entering my mom's neighborhood i'm just like damn i like it feels weird it, it doesn't feel like i'm back at home yeah you know what i'm saying and i'm and honestly in all honesty i feel weird and that don't make me fake that don't make me you know what i'm yeah, saying no. and i feel like that is installed in people like you gotta be real you gotta like represent your hood you gotta do this Man, you got and that. honestly like i feel that i feel where you're coming from because when growing up that's how i felt i felt like oh and if i was dumb enough i probably would have got it tatted all over me too you know what i'm saying just trying to be real trying to be hard but it's just it, it's not even it doesn't feel 
like home to me when I go back in the hood. I feel weird. Yeah, that's so, why. Like, um, I, I was t- matter of fact, I was having a conversation today with the, uh, my coach, and he was saying that when he goes back to his hood, he's he's from California, and when he goes back to his hood, and he would see somebody that are still doing the same shit that he was doing back in the day, and he has to bring his. He understands he can't come up. He he goes back to inspire them. You know what I'm saying? He can't stay too long, though, because he said if he goes back, he has to bring his mind level down to where they're at because mm. he can't just hit them where he's at right now because they won't get it. So he has to bring his mind level down and start talking to them like he's still one of the homies. But he knows he can't stay there long enough, that long because it'll just bring his mind and everything back down to where he was yeah. when he was still in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why it's good to go back just to inspire, but you gotta, you gotta, you know what I'm saying, just bring them up to your level instead of getting sunk back down to where you came from, you know what I'm saying? That makes sense. So, we're not trying to just shit on the hood or just be like, we better than, we're trying to inspire them and bring them up back to our level, but at the same time, we can't just be hanging out all day in the hood because... You can love your hood, but your hood don't love you, and I'll tell you this a hundred times, because every time I try to, like, be, like, in the hood when I was doing good, I would either get robbed, I would either get, you know what I'm just saying, like, it's just people in the hood. Yeah, man, in my neighborhood, I I swear, I, I knew everybody in my neighborhood and everybody had love for me but i swear to god if i left uh, my car window down or something my radio would get stole or my bike would get stole or you know what i'm saying like and i know all the thieves in the neighborhood they're all my friends so Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying had to be somebody i knew you know what (laughs) i'm saying my own neighbor that i used to feed like because i was making money i used to feed her and her kid I ain't gonna put you out there like that and say your name, but <laughs> yeah, her and her boyfriend broke into my house, took all my stuff, all my daughter's stuff, all my mom's stuff, yeah, that's and how and I then do. I called. That's the first person I called when I found out I, that they broke into my house. Did you see anybody drive by? Did you see anything? No. A year later, couldn't find out. I find my shit at her house. Oh yeah. Damn. So it was like you know what I'm saying, and I'm still fucking with you. And honestly, I felt great. Even though I felt betrayed, I felt this was when I was already going to church and like disciplining myself because I'm telling you, like, it was just a ripple effect. It was like two weeks after Carla passed away that they did that shit to me. Yeah. So it's just that's what I'm saying. The hood, you might love the hood and think, oh my God, I'm putting on for the hood, but the hood don't love you. And low key, it be hating on you when you're doing good. But I'm glad that I found out a year later and she was like front row seat seeing my bounce back you know and and that's that's one thing i told her i looked her in her face when i saw my stuff in her house and i was like so it was you huh and then i was like this whole time you've been fake to me and i was just but i'm glad that you got a front row seat you know to see how much love i poured into you your kid and myself like i bounced back so yeah it's 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 it you ain't gotta be real to your hood that hard you know what i'm saying like things like what you're talking about is where i have a problem with i say i I, i'm the best at holding grudges if somebody do me dirty like that i got a grudge against you and i can't (laughs) i can't forgive you you know the first place i went to after i found out like i literally sat in my car and i cried and i was like i'm about to beat her up but i drove my ass to church and i was like god forgive her for me Forgive her, forgive her, forgive her, because yeah. I could, I could literally call somebody right now, go into her. I know how to get in her house, you know. And I just had a whole bunch of stuff in my mind that I could have done, but then I was just like, you know what? She's still in the hood. Like she's still, she's still doing bad, you know. So I was like, I can't even, I can't. I felt like um, I had to let go. And then two weeks after I confronted her, I don't know. We ran across each other because we have mutual friends. And she came up to me and she was like really, 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 really crying and sorry and like trying to be cool with me still because she knew she messed up. And I just literally looked her in her eyes and I was like, you know what? I forgive you, but I'm not going to be cool with you. Like, I don't know what you expect from this. Like, okay, you want me to just be like, I love you. And, you know, it's okay. Like, nah, like you showed me who you were and Mm. I'm going to believe you. Like, that's who you are. After everything I've done, done for you, been there for you, and everything like that, it 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 was messed up. But it showed me that even though I was sitting there thinking like I was feeding her, I'm talking about 
we would eat good. Like how Lucky said, he would spend his money on buying everybody drinks. You know, like, oh, it's on me. Mm -hmm. That's how I was. So it showed me that you just have to be very disciplined. You have to clean your circle mm -hmm. out. And no matter how much you spend, it's going to be never enough. They always going to complain mm -hmm. that you didn't do enough for them. No mm -hmm. matter how much you did for them, they're going to Find see excuses it. to see and say that you weren't real enough. Yeah. So... With that being said, growing up on all that, because we went left <laughs> again, <laughs> but yeah, growing up on thinking you're like glorifying the hood, the street life and all that, it ain't going to get you nowhere. Yeah. So we really are so trying to- So that's why we're trying to inspire put, people and put positive vibes out there and say, look, we made it out and we changed our life around and this is how you could do it too. Man, this is like therapy. This, this group therapy this session therapy. right here, so, so I just felt chill. The holy- the <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, take, taking these little, these little um, every, daily little disciplines for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Daily disciplines for yourself who can change your life around. And I know it's hard when you in the hood, you ain't got no money, and you stuck there, and there's nowhere to go. But you just start working on yourself first. You know what I'm saying? Or just running around the block for 15 minutes every morning, praying every morning, and doing something every day, consistently every day. Cause that's what makes it. If you do it once or twice a week or skip a day, that's not discipline. That's not gonna get you nowhere. But if you do it every day and you be committed every day, that's when the doors will start opening up for you. Mm. That's dope, man. Well, shit. I think we're about time now. So uh, make sure y'all hit the subscribe button. Uh, ready, we all <laughs> Those don't even want to do that shit no more. Well, uh, we all know where to y'all already, already know what to do we love y'all we really appreciate y'all if y'all got all the way through the end yeah if y'all made it right saying. here ain't number love lucha gang lucha gang shout out to coast baby lucky over here and kelly jean we out peace that was a good one